I want you to understand that our unity and our coming together guarantees multiplication. Somebody say multiplication. It is the day of multiplication. And let me declare a prophetic word this morning. The Bible said, my people shall build houses and dwell therein. That my people will not build houses for another to dwell therein. I'm declaring by the prophetic word, before heaven and earth, that anyone building among us will finish. And in the name, you finish at record time. And you will dwell therein in good health. You will not build for another to dwell therein. If you believe it, put your hands together and say, I receive. Somebody says, coming together. Say it. Say, coming together. Say, yielding my fruit to one another brings multiplication. As long as you stand alone and as long as you hold on to what you have, you're always going to be alone. you never multiply. you never make an impact or a difference. But you can make an impact and have a place in history when you learn to yield what you have and to stop holding on to what you have and yield it for the benefits of others. Every gifting God has given to you and I is for the benefits of others. The gifts of the spirits. The fruit of our born again spirits. You never see a tree or a branch bearing fruit and eating their own fruit. You never see a tree or a branch eating its own fruit. When a tree and a branch bear fruit, it's for the benefits of others. So God has designed you and I to be a blessing to others. We're never made to be on our own. There's nothing like an island to yourself. We are interconnected. We need one another. And until we get that revelation, until we receive that revelation and see that light, you are alone. You abide alone. You die alone. But if you want to go far, you want to multiply, and you want to live life with ease, Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that it is in our connecting with one another that allows that anointing of God to multiply us. So please, henceforth, never stand alone, never be alone. It's dangerous to stand and to be alone. Samson was very gifted, very anointed, the strongest man of all time. And yet was destroyed by something he could have conquered because something was a loner. Something was a loner. Please don't be a loner. Come with me to the book of John, the sixth chapter, and let's look at the ninth verse. Say multiplication. Mm, say it again. Say multiplication. Mm, I can't hear you. Say it again. Say multiplication. Tell somebody, if you want to multiply, connect with others. If you want to multiply, connect with others. As long as you stay on your own and hold on to what you have, you never know multiplication. You don't even know what you have. The lad didn't know what he had until he yielded it for the use and the benefit of others. And then suddenly, what he had multiplied, fed, impacted, touched, and blessed. So many and they had 12 baskets left over because he didn't hold on to it. Until we stop holding on to what we have, until we become selfless and we stop being selfish, we will always mark time and struggle. <clears throat> we were never designed by God to hold on to anything. The Bible said, what have you that you did not receive? Why then do you act as if you didn't receive it? There is nothing we came to this world with when we were born. Naked came down and naked you shall return. How are you going to get out of here? All the thing we are, all the wealth we are amassing and houses we are building is good. Investment is all great. But at the end of the day, yield it to the benefit of others. Yield it to the work of God. 
make it available to the for the benefit of God's people and the church for eternal mileage. It is the things we do here that determines our placement over there. The Greek philosophy says that there are three kinds of people in every society. The first are the type that are very educated and wealthy and well-to-do, but are self-centered, selfish and greedy. Don't care about anyone but themselves and their immediate family. It's all about them. Nothing matters but just them and their immediate family. Then there's a, another kind. And for them, it's all about their tribe and their political party and their religion. That's it. They kill for their tribe, their political party, and their religion. That's all that matters to them. And the third kind are those that are called citizens. And citizens are those who live for country, love for country, care about country, the well-being of country, and they care about generations yet unborn. They live to build legacies for future generations. That's why we all run to the West every now and then because they have fathers who are transgenerational thinkers. Transgenerational thinkers. They had a future of not just their kids but their grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren in mind. And they build having that in mind. A world that will bring together their children and their great-grandchildren, a better place for their great-grandchildren. They deny themselves of comfort for the benefit of future generations. Until we find that in our time, there's no future. It doesn't matter how well we live. There's no tomorrow. If we don't live with eternity, and with future generations in mind. We live a life without purpose. We walk aimlessly, and we will live carelessly. But when we live a life of purpose, when we become transgenerational thinkers, we think, we act, we make choices or decisions in life, always with the future in mind. Our kids and their children in their generation, how the world and how Ghana and our nations and our communities and our families will be like. You and I owe it to your children and to future generations to make the world you met, the village, the community, and the Ghana we were born into a better place for future generations. The generation that comes here after must not struggle like we did. It must be better for them than us. Everything that we struggle with, they shouldn't struggle with. Come with me, John 6, 9. There is a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? The, the young man had five loaves of bread, Bishop. Two fishes, that's all. That's all. That's all. You, you have no idea what the little you have can do when you put it in the hands of God. When that little you think you have that you are holding and holding on to and saving for a rainy day, you have no idea what it does when you yield it, when you hand it over and surround it to Adonai and for the work of the ministry. How God can take that little you think you have that you are holding and multiply it for the benefit of so many. And then you end up having abundance, multiplication. Only happens when we make available what we have for the benefits of others. Not when we hoard. Not when we hold on to it. For there is one that withholdeth and it turns to poverty. And there's another that gives and scatters what they have. And yet they increase. It's a principle of God. Deuteronomy 6, 4. There is something about when the Bible said, one shall put a thousand to flight. I expect that one should be able to put a thousand to flight. But 
The key here is, if we can put a thousand to fly, one puts a thousand to fly, then two should put two thousand to fly in addition. That's it. But the Bible said, God said, if I can find two come together with one accord, and the goal and the purpose and the motive is about the benefits of others, blessing others, moving my work, moving the tribes and the ministry, God said, I will go past addition and I'll give, I will multiply it. It won't just be 2,000, it will be 10,000. So that is what synergy, that is what togetherness, that is what connectivity, and that is what relating to one another does. It brings what? Multiplication. Somebody use the word. The more you say multiplication, everything you have will multiply. Come on, I can't hear you. Some of you don't want what you have. All your money is going to multiply if you say multiplication. Hey, so you like money like that, eh? <laughs> Well, give God praise. Put your hands together and thank God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Being, being, being together is so powerful. And, and yet, we might have different personalities and way of thinking, different upbringing, but still together and still one. If you look at our bodies, for instance, it has different organs or parts, but it's one. Even though it's one body, it has different members in the body. And every organ of your body is needed for you to function as one. I have a watch here. It has different parts, but it's one watch. But there are so many things that makes this watch a watch. If you touch some of the components, you touch some of the things that makes this watch a watch, it stops functioning. It's like a car. There are different parts of the car or the vehicle that makes it a car. But it's still a car. It's one car. But there are different parts that makes it one car. It's the same thing with your body. And it's the same thing with the tribes. And it's the same thing with the church. So we have our differences. Uh, you may not agree with me, I may not agree with you. We may not relate the way we should, but we are still one body. We belong to one another. The year, the year, we call it one year, but it takes 12 solid months to make up one year. 12 months to make up one year. It is one year, but it takes 12 months to make up one year. Israel is a nation, but it takes the 12 tribes of Israel to form the nation of Israel. 12 tribes, 12 tribes, and that is what makes the nation of Israel. Not 11, not 10, not 9, but how many? 12 tribes of Israel. In heaven, we have 12 gates in heaven, 12 gates in heaven, and 12 angels at every gate in heaven, 12 gates 12 angels. There is something about 12. We'll talk about it some other time when I finish the message of 12 and 12. The 12 years old and the woman that bled for 12 years. We'll tackle that some other time. But there are 12 gates in heaven, 12 angels, and on the 12 gates in heaven, the Bible said that the names of the 12 tribes of Israel are written on all the 12 gates in heaven. Somebody say, talk to me. Read Revelation 21 and 12. Revelation 21 and 12. And he had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels, the names and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Revelation 21, 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it was transparent glass. Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. A crown of 12 stars. There's something about 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. 
Um, uh, come with me to Romans 12 and verse 5, please. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. Again. And so we, being many, are one body in Christ. So we are many, but we are still one. It's like your body. There are parts of your organs you've never seen it before. But when any part of those organs in your body goes bad, infected, wrong, Lord have mercy, it shuts everything down. Turn to somebody and say, you may not know this, but you can't do without me. You can't do without me. Tell somebody, you don't know this. But you can't do it without me. Tell someone else, you need me. You need me. Yeah. Okay, and then let's move it to another area. Tell somebody, I need you. you. You never realize that. You know, you never realize that. I've come to the conclusion in life that never disrespect anyone, even when you don't like them. I'm telling you. You may not like somebody. You may disagree with someone. But never disregard, dishonor, and disrespect people. Don't do it. Because you see, in this life, eh, you never know who you are going to need tomorrow. Life is some way. And time changes. I've seen the great. And I've seen the powerful in a situation. And I say to myself, is that the great? Is that that almighty, that all-powerful person? And, and especially if the way you treat others and your confidence is derived by influence, money, material things, or things that you have or possession, you are to be pitied among all men. Because things change. I'm telling you. I've seen loaded people. You know, recently a guy in New York had billions of dollars and he woke up one morning he was short of about 11 million. Remind me, after the second service, I'll find the correct information. And he threw himself off his apartment in New York and died. I just look at him and said, this guy needs help. He couldn't believe that he lost billions of dollars. You made it. You created it. If you've lost it, you can get it again. As long as you are alive and you are around, you can still, you got it. You are quiet. You can still get it again. Why take your life? I don't get it. But there are people like that. They treat human beings like you don't exist. They disrespect people. You may not like me. You may not agree with me. But that doesn't authorize you and gives you the audacity to disrespect or dishonor me. No, 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 no. And to this, you never know tomorrow. I've seen too much in 45 years of preaching. I've seen things. I mean, if you look at Saddam in a hole with all his money. This was, this guy was no joke, Saddam. Look at Gaddafi in a hole. Billions of dollars. Why then do you think you are so important and you don't need anybody? This mentality, I don't, I don't need anybody, I'm okay by myself, is pride. That's all it is. It's pride, it's ignorance, and it's pitiful. When you think you've come to a point in life by the reason of connection, many years ago there was a, a finance minister in this country and he was very powerful. And one time I heard him saying that, as for him and poverty is a million miles away. And many years after, there was a, a program made and I was invited. And I saw him. I saw him and his wife and the way he was walking. Then I greeted him. And I said, the man that is a million miles away with money. And I learned a lot out of that. That never, never, never take pride and never feel confident 
by material things. They all pass away. Solomon said it's all what? Vanity. Can I talk to you? Okay, let's go ahead. Come with me to Ephesians. Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. There is one body and one spirit, mm -hmm. even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, mm -hmm. clear as crystal, proceeding mm -hmm. out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. In the midst of the street of it, mm -hmm. and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, mm -hmm. which bore twelve manner of fruits. How many fruits? Twelve. How many fruits? Twelve manner of fruits. Go ahead. And he yielded her fruit every month. You see, it didn't just bear fruit. It bore fruit and it yielded it. The problem with the church and affecting leadership all over Africa politically is the fact that people succeed. They bear fruit, but they don't yield it. They don't make it available for the benefits of the nations, for the benefit of others. They hoard it, they keep to themselves, they hold on to it. It's not for the benefit of others. They don't yield it. But here in heaven, they bore fruit and they yielded it. Go ahead, look at what happens. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The healing, it was for the healing of the nations. So nations aren't being healed. The nations are not being healed because people are hoarding. People are holding on to their giftings, holding on to their talents. Somebody is hurt. This one is offended. This one say, for me, I'm shy. This one say, well, I don't want anybody knowing my business. They talk too much. I keep to myself. This is the way I am. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God said, I will bless you so you can be a blessing. That is the essence of living. The only reason why we have life, you have life, and I have life, and health, it's for the profiting of the body of Christ. In Genesis, God said, Abraham, I will make your name great. I will bless you so you can be a blessing. Hear me? It doesn't matter how blessed you think you are. If it doesn't show and reflect in the life of others, you are not blessed. Until you become the point of reference of the blessings of others, you are not blessed. I was at a train station on Friday in Paddington. And I had people, Dr. Williams, Archbishop, Papa, and some people would come and bow. And all these people were looking at me. I felt very embarrassed and bad. Why, why? I said, don't bow, don't bow. Just greet me, just greet me. Papa, bless me. Pray for me. Touch me. Then in the plane, some people came with their babies. Papa, bless my baby for me. Bless my baby for me. I was sleeping. They woke me up. And I said, they won't even let me sleep in the air. You know, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing for you to be needed, to be wanted. It's a blessing. So there were some empty seats behind where I was sitting. So I maneuvered and I told them if they can move me there. Oh, when they moved me there, some people at that area also saw me. And they said, oh, we thank God. Papa, I've seen you. Papa, let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. So I just realized that, you know what? It is what it is. Just enjoy it and just thank God that you are needed, that you are wanted. Because you can't complain. I thought over there, I said to myself, I'm so tired, I'm just going to wind down and sleep throughout the flight. And I could see God sitting down there and say, you, you are going to do or sleep. With all this anointing I've given you, people need you, so don't even go there. So I started thinking, and I said, you know something, let me not complain. Let me just thank God. And I have to, I have to learn to be nice. You know, they take pictures with you. And they are smiling, and you too, you must smile. And, and, and I don't want to smile, so I have to do this. <laughs> you know, 
sometimes, sometimes I, don't, I don't want to smile. I'm just saying in my head, can you please take the picture and go and leave me alone? And God is saying, ain't nobody taking picture and leaving you alone. You are mine. I own you. That's what it is. We are not ourselves. I'm redeemed and delivered for the benefit of others. And until you have that understanding, you are going to look down on people. You are going to mishandle people and disrespect people. Every tree, they yielded their fruit and they bore fruit. Every tree bore fruit for each month of the year. And they yielded their fruit and their leaves heal the nations. We are not healing the nations. The nations are sick. Because everyone is to themselves. Everyone is very careful. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be offended. Hear me. As long as you live, somebody is going to hurt you. And somebody is going to offend you. Even your tongue will hurt you. Your teeth will hurt your tongue. Are you hearing me? And you just have to understand the workings of God. I was telling the bishop yesterday, I said, why do you think the Bible talks about long sufferings? Everybody do this. Say, long suffering. Uh -huh. Suffering long. It's because God puts you together with some people and you just have to learn to suffer long. You think I've been with Bishop Obodai 30 how many years now? 41 years with Bishop Obodai. Bishop Nyako, is it 45 now? 46 years. You know? And Abigail, how many years? 40 years. You know? I've been with people for many years. You think, you think we are angels? No, 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 no. We are flesh and blood like you. Sometimes I just have to overlook some things. Simple. And I just have to think about their value to me and to the work of God and just let some things go. You know, I told Bishop Bodai today, yesterday when, when we were studying, I said, Bishop, meet me at the office at 645. And before you, that's, oh, I'll be there at 6.30. This time he said, 6.45? I said, yes, yeah, 6.45. <laughs> you know? And I, I, I knew exactly what he was thinking. So this man, can't you just rest? 6.45 for what again, Papa? After all these things, 6.45, it's too early now. I didn't mind him. And 6.45, I was there at 6.45. 40, and I was looking at my time. I was, I was waiting for an occasion to fire. Before, before 6.45, the man was there. <laughs> you know, hear me. Long suffering with your husband, with your wife. Sometimes I come home, and then Rosa said, how was your day? great. So what happened? And I saw this, and so, and this, and then she wants me to now give her the rundown of all the meetings who I met with, what it was all about, and I said, listen, baby, I'm tired. I've had a long day. Right now, I want to sit in the jacuzzi. I want some hot water. I want to put some salt and everything. So I, want to, I want to take a, I need some ministrations. Uh, that is all I said. Those of you who are, who are not spiritual, you are thinking something. You see, I got you. <laughs> Amen. But she wants me to tell her everything. And I said, babe, can we talk about it another time? No, no, no. I, I just want to know what happened. Can't you just talk to me? And I said, hey, talk to me for. <laughs> hey, there are many. Amen. But that is women. They want information. They want to know. It's part of the long suffering. Oh, why are you laughing? <laughs> it is what it is. It took me years to learn long suffering. When I was young, I, I didn't have patience for some things at all. I will fire you right now. But 
I'm beginning to understand that, hey, everybody is important. Sometimes my children tell me, dad, dad, you are too forgiving. You are too forgiving. You let people exploit you and take advantage. And I say, no, 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 no. I'm not too forgiving. God is too forgiving. I'm not. I'm a, I'm, I'm a man. And I said, you know, kids, the reason why I forgive the way I do is because I've been forgiven of so much. Of so much. And I still need to be forgiven on daily basis. And then I said, the Bible said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And I said, as long as I live, I will need mercy till the day Jesus comes. And the more I can show mercy, the more mercy abounds to me and to my children and to my grandchildren. When I show other people's children mercy, my children are also entitled to mercy. <laughs> so sometimes you may not need the mercy, but your children, your grandchildren somewhere tomorrow may need the mercy you show other people's children today. I'm telling you. Please remember as long as you live that God resisted the proud and to not want to connect and not belonging is pride. And for those of you who don't belong to any tribe and you haven't registered with your tribe, please make sure we have the information on the screen. Register online. Use your phone. Get the information. Register. Be part of your tribe. And do you know the exciting thing is some of you may have things to offer and to help your tribe. You, you, you are loaded. I'm not talking about money, but in ideas. You, you have so much you can offer your tribe to better your tribe. Why sit there Sunday morning not profiting and benefiting anybody? You come to church with all that you have. I meet people that have been in this church for 30 years and we've never spoken before. And they know everything about me. And I don't know anything about them. Some very important people. They sit here in my branches. We have over 40 churches in Accra alone. On the spring text road, about three or four. And they all came from here. And I meet people all the time. I don't know them. Listen, the only way we can effectively shepherd you and help you is to be part of your tribe. When you are traveling, it's important to let the head of your tribe, your shepherds know, I'll be out of town. I'm so, so, and so. I'll be out of town for a week or two. Please cover me. Please pray for safety. Pray for protection. Pray for favor for me. Traveling these days is not easy. Even in Africa, when you are traveling, it's so complicated in traveling here in Africa than going to Europe and America. You need one another. We need to connect. And I'm not going to stop talking about connectivity, being part of a tribe, until I see every one of you connecting one to another. Last Sunday, we didn't have time to fellowship. We're going to make time one of these days for all the tribe to walk around and connect one with another. And when I say connect, I'm not saying start collecting money from people. Yeah. If you lend money to anybody without the leadership of your tribe knowing and they play 419 on you, you can't hold us responsible. Don't give anybody money. Don't do business deal with anybody unless you clear it with leadership. We need to check people and find out who they are so nobody takes advantage in the name of the tribe to exploit or take advantage of anybody. So you need, you need to relate. You need to be wise. Turn to somebody and say, be wise, be wise. Yeah, the fact that I'm part of your tribe, don't, don't reveal everything about yourself. Eh? Don't tell all your business, but relate to people. You know, I was telling one of my sons the other day, he was having a problem with uh, a best friend of his, and he was very, very hurt. And I said, hear, hear me. I said, listen, son. I said, as long as you live, you are going to be hurt about something. You will always be hurt. He said, what do I do, dad? I said, don't cut him off. And don't even let him know you know. He said, then what do I do? I said, the awareness is the key. Being aware is the key. And then he said, but, 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 it's not enough to be aware. I said it is. I said it is. I said being aware and number two, relate to him but keep your business to yourself. Yeah, because you can't trust him. You can't trust him. So you keep your business to yourself. It's not everybody I tell my business. 
Are you hearing me? And especially when people tell you, you can trust me, you can trust me, you are lying. You don't have to tell me I can trust you. As soon as you say you can trust me, no, I know you are setting me up. Oh, yeah, yeah I won't tell you anything at all. Yeah. If you ask me, where were you born? I say I was born at uh, Bolgatanga. Because I know if I give you the right information, you Google me right now. You know? So, people will hurt you in life. And if you are going to be disturbed by being hurt, you always be hurt. And you'll be bitter. So learn to forgive. You know, Nelson Mandela said something very, very powerful. He said, he said, it always seems impossible until it is done. And sometimes it seems impossible to relate to people, to flow with others, because you've had all kinds of bad experiences, but it can be better. And then he said the other day, he said, as I stand by the door to my freedom, I realize that if I don't leave behind my bitterness and unforgiveness of all that apartheid has done to me for 27 years, I will walk through this door of freedom and I'll still be in prison. Don't let your past imprison you. Please, stand on your feet.